All right, so um, here we're talking about uh, viral encephalitis. Um, so going to the presentation of uh, viral encephalitis, I won't really uh, write this down, but um, for the presentation, a lot of times when encephalitis is on your differential, meningitis may be on your differential as well. The reason we'll treat both of them, we'll go through that a little bit. Um, but for the presentation, the thing that really should clue you in for, men, for encephalitis is that there's inflammation of the brain parenchyma. That inflammation of the brain parenchyma can cause you know, CNS infects, so things like encephalopathy may be more prominent. There can be focal neurological deficits based on um, where that inflammation is. There can be you know, things with uh, like personality changes. Um, there may be even um, other uh, movement disorders that you know, occur with encephalitis as well. Lastly, because there's inflammation of the brain parenchyma, there's a higher rate of seizure. So any seizure could make you be concerned for encephalitis. Um, so that, that's your usual presentation. You know, the typical illness script would be an older patient come in with you know, fevers, chills, uh, ence fevers, encephalopathy, focal neurological deficits, change in personality. Um, and um, with the presence of seizures. So <clears throat> looking uh, to the um, differential for viral encephalitis, most common is going to be HSV. All right, so HSV is going to be your most common cause, typically HSV1. Um, now you can see here this patient has oral labial HSV right here, but you do not always have to have the vesicular uh, lesion um, due to HSV. For that one, it will usually affect your temporal lobes. Um, so you may see inflammation there uh, when, you, when you do an MRI. CT scans are really not sensitive enough to detect inflammation, which is why um, for workup, I guess we'll get to that a little bit, you're gonna need MRI. And this is may be exactly kind of what you see here with this patient with um, HSV encephalitis. Uh, the next common cause is going to be varicella virus. You know, here's your typical um, shingles rash here that has a dermatomal distribution. Once again, just like HSV, unfortunately, you, may, you can have a VZV encephalitis without the rash. The time that I saw this was in a severely immunosuppressed patient, um, secondary to AIDS, and the patient came in with without the, the typical rash, but did have VZV encephalitis. One of the things you might see with VZV encephalitis, you can also see this in uh, early neurosyphilis, specifically meningovascular neurosyphilis, um, is going to be, these patients can actually get vascular inflammation and subsequently get a stroke. So patients can also have stroke as well. Um, last things uh, you do really want to rule out um, or at least consider, and you want to really ask a really good uh, history about this. Is it summertime? You know, is the patient uh, have tick exposure, mosquito exposure? Uh, it's going to be your arboviruses. All right, so arboviruses um, from tick-borne, there's one that's by the deer tick called palassin virus. Um, and then, you know, you always have to worry about, uh, especially if it's in the summertime, patient has a macular papular rash, patient may have infection with anterior horn cells with flaccid paralysis, uh, you really need to worry about West Nile virus more commonly, and um, patients who are immunosuppressed or even age-related T-cell immunosuppression too. So we got HSV, VZV. Um, one thing about your arboviruses is that they may have a predilection for kind of the deeper structures, things like basal ganglia, uh, thalamus. You know, with that presentation, they may actually present with uh, movement disorders as well. One thing you always want to check is um, going to be HIV. You can get HIV encephalitis. It can happen secondary to HIV itself, or it obviously puts you at risk for uh, opportunist infections, things like CMV, HSV, um, that may present with encephalitis. So in all cases, you'll be checking the HSV test. Lastly, maybe not quite as common, um, but it's going to be your respiratory viruses. If it does present, let's say, with a flu-like illness, um, it could be flu, it could be paraflu. These you know, do cause uh, encephalitis. Sometimes, a lot of times, they affect similar areas as arboviruses as well. Um, all right, so workup. Um, everyone, well, really everyone, you're going to start with a CT. Um, you know, these patients may present with uh, neurological deficits, can present with seizures. So you're going to be wanting to rule out a structural lesion, but you also will be getting an MRI, a CT. It's not usually good at finding small areas of ischemia, demyelination, and inflammation. So an MRI is going to be uh, much, much better um, for sensitivity for that. Um, so really all these patients are going to need a CT. Um, obviously, 
uh, to make the diagnosis, you're going to do a lumbar puncture. And when you do that lumbar puncture, you know, you're going to be sending um, not only your basic labs, but you're going to be sending a pretty hefty workup um, as well. We're going through the differential diagnosis. But, you know, at least for your general labs, this can be really, really helpful um, for your LP. You know, the things that you're looking at is you know, normal opening pressure. If the opening pressure is high, you're going to be wanting to think about bacterial meningitis, um, a TB or fungal you should have a high WBC. It shouldn't be extremely high, right? It should be less than a thousand. And you know, viral infections more hits your T cell uh, immune system, so it should be really lymphocytic predominant instead of bacterial, which mostly causes an innate immune system inflammation. Would be a lot neutrophilic. Um, you're gonna have a high protein. It should be shouldn't be too crazy. It should be less like less than 300. If it's more than that, you still think about bacteria. Um, and then lastly, uh, here, you're going to be looking at a normal glucose. That glucose is low. You're going to be thinking once again, is this more bacterial, TB, fungal? I think even lymphogenic carcinomatosis can give you a low glucose as well from the neoplastic cells. All right. Um, you're obviously going to be sending a lot of, um, a lot of other different studies. Um, you'll be working on the viral panel, viral PCR. You're going to be sending off, um, other things that are on the differential as well. Um, so other things to consider, you know, anything that causes inflammation in the brain. So there's other infections, right? So syphilis, tick, other tick-borne, especially Lyme can do this. Um, you know, things like fungal TB, toxo can, at least on presentation with fever, encephalopathy, focal neuro neurological deficits can, you know, you'll be kind of considering this. Um, you'll also be thinking about um, other autoimmune causes, and this can be systemic autoimmune disorders, things like lupus, um, or this can be primary um, neurological disorders like, you know, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, um, anti-MOG, anti-NMO, um, all things that will present maybe a little bit febrile, but mostly with that encephalopathy and can have focal neurological deficits. Lastly, you know, pretty low... Um, pretty low uh, threshold to do an EEG on these patients. The reason why is that, you know, inflammation of the brain parenchyma is very uh, irrita irritative and can cause a elect electrically unstable foci, putting at risk for seizures. And the things that you want to rule out, especially if your patient is encephalopathic and continues to be encephalopathic, it could obviously just be due to encephalitis, encephalitis itself, but a lot of times you want to rule out non-convulsive status epilepticus. Um, so a lot of times, obviously, neuro is going to be involved in these cases, and you may need an EEG for some time. For most patients, um, especially if they're having signs and symptoms of uh, encephalitis um, or seizures, sorry. All right, so lastly, what is going to be your empiric treatment for all patients? Um, so everyone needs IVA cyclopyr. Why? Uh, most common cause of encephalitis is going to be HSV. Um, and not only will this get HSV, you'll also get the additional coverage of BZV too. So IVA cyclovir, most patients are going to get bacterial meningitis treatment um, as well. Uh, if they come in with fevers, you know, headache, um, you know, meningitis is still in your differential and low thresholders treat this as well. So they might be started on something like vagceptraxone, depending on age and immunosuppression, um, you might think about adding on ampicillin uh, as well. Um, so most will get bacterial meningitis treatment as well as IVA cyclovir treatment. And then you can usually de-escalate uh, based on that lumbar puncture and based on clinical suspicion. And lastly, I will say um, others, so Lyme, syphilis, uh, tick-borne, um, autoimmune causes based on results and suspicion of what you think that underlying disorder is. All right. Um, so that is your general pathogenesis presentation uh, workup differential and treatment of viral encephalitis. Um, you know, remember HSV is the most common. Everyone should be started on IV cyclovir. Usually if you're starting IV cyclovir and concerned about encephalitis, you're probably covered for bacterial meningitis. Everyone gets a CT head um, to rule out structural lesions and then ultimately gets an MRI looking for where that area of inflammation is, which one, increases your suspicion of encephalitis, and also, two, can help you with the pathogen based on um, where that uh, inflammation
inflammation is. And lastly, NLP and EEG, and a lot of times used at that LP, subsequently to narrow your therapy and uh, delineate what is the most common cause. And with that LP, not only are you getting your kind of normal things that you check on a lumbar puncture, you're also checking for you know, things like bacterial, um, you're seeing, checking for bacterial causes, maybe cytology, you're checking for a viral PCR, you may be adding on uh, checking for syphilis, um, checking for Lyme disease, uh, things like uh, fungal cultures, uh, things like that based on clinical suspicion. All right. All right. That's your workup and treatment. And thank you.